Chapter 13, Descriptive Research. Descriptive research uh, typically involves measuring a variable or a set of variables that exist naturally. It's in a clear contrast with the other type of research, uh, including the true experimental research and quasi-experimental research and even non-experimental research. Because here we're not looking for uh, any type of cause and effect relationships. Uh, and we are not even looking for the relationship between variables like we do in correlational research. Examples of descriptive research are uh, the type of surveys that we do and we report the numbers or percentage of the responses to a specific question. For example, we report that the suicide rate is about 7.5, 7.5 per 100,000 students. Or we may say that our survey results shows that 61% of adults in the United States uh, currently drink alcohol. We have three types of uh, descriptive research, observational survey and case study. Observation is uh, usually done with a, like a checklist that you observe your participants and you uh, record everything that you are interested in measuring. And when you're observing a complex situation, you cannot simply record everything. So you have to have a plan uh, to do your observations. Uh, and usually you have to take a sample of the behaviors or the events that you want to measure. Uh, there are three types of sampling that you can use. Uh, one is time sampling. So you go to a school and you observe students for the first week and the fifth week and the 20th uh, week of classes. Uh, another one is the event sampling that uh, for a while observe the participants communication skills then you observe their collaboration behavior and then you observe and measure uh, how long or how much they stay on task. Uh, and also you can do individual sampling which means uh, you observe uh, an individual for a while and then a second individual and then uh, a third in, uh, individual. And no matter uh, which sampling method you use, you have to go through a process of uh, measurement. Uh, first, you establish uh, be a behavioral category, uh, like what kind of behaviors you want to observe and measure. Uh, so for example, instead of saying that I want to go to this school and uh, observe students aggressive behavior, you have to define what is aggressive behavior and what does include. For example, you're going to measure the, the number of yellings or sulkings or um, pushings. These are more concrete and more observable than something like aggressive behavior, which is a construct hard to measure. The second step is to obtain a numerical score for each behavioral category. And you can do this by measuring the frequency method. For example, how many students are involved in this behavior. The duration method, like uh, how long uh, each student or group of students are involved in this. And you can also use the interval method, which means uh, like in a given time interval, uh, how many times or how often this happens, like per minute or uh, per hour. And the third method uh, for measurement is uh, using multiple observers. That's a good idea for uh, all types of observations because uh, uh, if we have only one observer, it's very likely that you disregard or you don't notice some specific uh, behaviors or events. Uh, so it's always a good idea to have multiple observers and then you check with them for a sort of inter-rater reliability. Uh, and of course, if you videotape uh, uh, your students, probably there is uh, no need for multiple observers.